I love to get like a, a package in the mail, but usually it's something you know what you're getting. There's something magical about not knowing what's inside. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, wow. Oh, this is gonna be a goodie. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Since last week's video, this channel uh, just crossed a pretty big milestone, and that is 10,000 subscribers on the old YouTube. It's pretty wild, but uh, when we started this channel roughly about three years ago, um, you know, I kind of was just putting out videos uh, for fun and, and for me, but uh, to think that, you know, over the course of the past, I would say 95 or so uh, episodes, we've gotten 10,000 uh, old school fools like me to hop aboard the old retro wagon is pretty cool. Without a doubt, one of the coolest aspects of this little retro journey for me has been the bass and buds that I've met along the way. Uh, the folks in the comment section who show up uh, week after week, as well as the fellow YouTubers out there. You know, I don't care if somebody has uh, 29 subscribers or 129,000. If they are a like-minded individual, uh, if it's old, it's gold mentality, um, I'm going to do all I can to promote their brand on this channel. But as the channel does grow, one of the exciting things for me is that a lot of the folks that I used to watch on the YouTube as just a general you know, subscriber of their channels um, are now uh, familiar with Retro Bassin. And you might have noticed over the past couple weeks, we've uh, done a couple of pretty cool things with some channels that I've always been a fan of. We've gotten some pretty cool unboxings from Baitman TV from Debo's Fishing, as well as Realistic Fishing. And I will link all of those down below. In addition to that, we've got some uh, live streams planned with a number of YouTubers out there, including Debo's Fishing, who we just did a live stream with him a couple weeks ago. That was a ton of fun. Uh, Baitman TV, we've got some stuff planned. Hella Bass, and one of my new Bass and Buds by the name of Epic Eric, who does some streaming over at Small Mouth Crush. Eric and I ran into each other, I think it was on the old Instagram, and he's got a pretty cool uh, web page as well as a website called The Bass Lab. Now, The Bass Lab is all about custom creations, bait collaborations, and the hunt for crazy good lures that scorch them, either old or new. I will link all the information from him down below. Definitely hop over to his Instagram page. It is totally worth the follow, as well as the old Bass Lab website, which has a ton of cool stuff, including some baits that I want to get my hands on. Another funny thing about Eric is that even though I'm based in Texas now, I did start out up in Maryland, and he and I went to high school together, probably about 20 or 30 minutes apart, in the same general era. So he and I were probably doing some trespass in high school around at the same time. Not too long back, I sent Eric a, a little care pack from uh, Retro Bassin, which he opened up, and I'll link that video down below. But in return, he sent me something that I am super pumped about, and I've been kind of sitting on for about a week or two. This is a care pack from Epic Eric's Bass Lab. I see the little Bass Lab logo on it, and oh, it sounds rattly. So I have not touched this box. I was kind of saving it for the video. We took a road trip down to Florida and I have been kind of wondering what's inside and wondering if I should have opened it for my little trip down to Headwaters. But uh, we are back in Texas and we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a whirl for the camera. I'll clean this up real quick. Uh, all right, so let us guess what's inside here. So there's definitely some, some baits in there. Hopefully there's a sticker or two. They've got some really cool decals or slaps as he calls them on his uh, website. 
<laughs> I love to get like a, a package in the mail, but usually it's something you know what you're getting. There's something magical about not knowing what's inside. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wow. Oh, this is gonna be a goodie. <laughs> so first off, we've got a, a little note from Eric. I'll read this. Yo, Chris, I totally dig in the vibe you've got going at Retro Bassin. Here's some golden era Bass Lab lures and some slaps. Yes. Enjoy and let's stream together soon. It will be epic. And when epic Eric says it's gonna be epic, it's probably gonna be epic. <laughs> So first things first, I'll open this little package here. This might be where the slaps are, and if so, that's awesome, because I've got some tackle boxes that I've been kind of souping up. He's got some big versions and some small versions. I don't know where he gets his designs done, but you know me, I kind of geek out over a little cool design. So there we go, there is the uh, Epic Eric's Bass Lab. I love that one. Oh man, that is totally gonna go in some place of prominence, I don't know where. Legendary Lakes Tour. Ha <laughs> ha. I was just on a Legendary Lake last week, so that's uh, fitting. Rise and Glide. Uh, looks like a mother swim bait there. I don't quite have the subs to afford one of those, but oh man. <laughs> a Dr. Krankenstein. I was kind of Dr. Krankenstein this summer, I gotta tell you. And River Rat, you know, probably back in the day when Eric and I were both fishing the Severn and Magathy Rivers. Um, you gotta wonder how close we were to each other. That's pretty funny. <laughs> the old River Rat, I like that. Uh, well, right out of the gates, I also see this, which is a pretty cool old school hat. Oh, wow, it says Epic Eric's Bass Lab. It is a nice Richardson 112, which is actually the same shells that we use over at uh, Texas Provisions for the retro bassing gear. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw this bad boy on for the rest of the episode. Dude, I love it. Nice. <laughs> Okay, so now I do see some old gold in here. And I'm gonna do my best to see if I can identify what he has included. So first things first, I see, looks like an old Cotton Cordell Deep Big O of some sort. Uh, I can tell because it says Deep Big O. It's got the little fish uh, logo there. And what was this? At Western Auto for $2.99. Oh man, I can't imagine going to a Western Auto and buying a Deep Big O, but I guess there was a time, huh? Ooh, ooh, okay. So if you guys saw my episode on the Deep Big O, it's a really interesting variation of the, the Fred C. Young Big O. And it came in a bunch of different profiles it, it, to the point that it almost looks like a different bait. And some of the Deep Big O's I have look a whole lot like a Bandit. Um, this one looks a whole lot different. It's just much more rounded. Uh, I don't know if that's a trout pattern or not. I'm going to assume so, but ooh, that's a good looking bait. Let's listen to that old uh, butyrate. Yeah, that low thump. Oh, wow, that's a nice one. It says the deep big O, and what does this say? Uh, how to fine tune the plug. Western Auto for $2.99. <laughs> that is awesome. That's a, that's a honey of a little crankbait. It's got a weird red dot on the belly. I don't know what that's about. That's interesting. Never seen that before on a cotton cordell. I wonder what that means. Hmm. Ooh, here's a nice one from Storm Lures, the Lightning Shad. Uh, at one time sold for $7.99, and let's see where this was made here. So it does say stormlures.com, made in Mexico, uh, store manufacturing in Minnesota. Huh. 
Look at that crankbait. So this is a, a lesser known model from Storm. Everyone, of course, knows the Storm Wigglewort, as well as the Thin Fin and the Hot and Tot. But the Lightning Shad, you know, I think this one came out a little bit later. And to be honest, I haven't actually thrown up a four. But it's nice. It's got a, a really thin profile, almost like a flat A. Uh, I could see this thing totally working um, when those bass are a, a little bit more icy and don't want a crazy wide wiggle. But that's a good looking bait. Ooh, man. But I'm probably not going to open that. So I'll just have to wonder how it, uh, how it would fish. <laughs> we'll find some of those. That's That might be worth throwing at some point. That's a good looking lure though. Huh. Okay, so Suddeth Little Earl Ratlin. Blade Master Lures in uh, Danielsville, Georgia. Huh. Okay. So Eric is going to have to drop a comment and let me know about this lure. I'll pin it at the top, but I've never actually heard of this thing. That looks like a, a spicy little custom crankbait. Oof, man, it's got almost a Bill Norman-esque lip, if, if I could say so. And I don't know if that lure is made of sort of like lazy Ike foam or not, but the way the lip is inserted into there, I don't know if you can see that, but it almost gives me the indication that this might not be a wooden crankbait, even though you might initially think so. Does she rattle? No, this is just the hook, so it doesn't rattle. Uh, the Suddeth Little Earl rattling crankbait. Oh, I guess it does rattle. Yeah, it's a little subtle rattle. <laughs> That's a good looking bait though. Uh, okay. The Stanley Baby Glitter. Ooh, this looks like a little mini wedge Stanley spinnerbait. I am a huge spinnerbait junkie. It is probably one of my top two confidence baits. It's weird because I don't think people throw spinnerbaits as much these days, but if I go to a new body of water, especially a small body of water, man, I throw on a, a little eighth ounce or a quarter ounce or even three eighths ounce spinnerbait, I feel like I can get bit. This is a nice one, and we just lost Lonnie Stanley this year, which was a total bummer, um, but we're going to be doing some Stanley stuff coming up in old 22, and this might be a bait. I might have to rip this sucker open and throw it because... That's a good looking little spinnerbait. Oh, here's another one. Uh, a spinnerbait from Hart called the Sweetheart. Hart had some really cool spinnerbaits back in the day. They've got the Sweetheart, which is a smaller version. They've got the Heartthrob, and my personal favorite called the Shaker, which is a pretty wild bait we'll have to fish with on this channel. It comes equipped with I think it's two or three of the most unique spinnerbait blades I've ever seen. But in the genre of tight little spinnerbaits that could do some damage on some small water, yeah, buddy. Um, that is one I could totally throw with that eh, very sort of Texas red looking color. So this one might have to get ripped open. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, come springtime. <laughs> So he sent me uh, return the favor with a Tom Man Fish World Pogo Shad. Yeah, it, it's no secret my affinity for anything Tom Man created, either at Man's or at Fish World. But this bait has to be one of my all-time favorites. This is the smaller version, the quarter ounce. It also came in a three-eighths ounce version. Um, but it's kind of appropriate that Eric uh, enclosed this. So down on the tidal Potomac River, where I'm sure he has spent a little bit of time, and I definitely did spend some time, this is one of the hottest baits in the spring, or at least it used to be. That river is filled with a ton of really shallow grass flats, and man, I remember we'd get out there in the early spring and toss this thing over some grass flats. And what's so cool about the Pogo Shad is that tail. And you can see it's definitely one of the most unique lipless crankbaits out there. And honestly, I'm kind of shocked that either this hasn't been reintroduced or that no one has tried to copy it. Because uh, Eric will tell you, and he's a big fan of this bait, it not only fishes like a standard lipless crankbait, but because of that uh, tail there, when you pause it, it helicopters down in a really cool way. So if you're working a grass flat and you hit a hole, you just pause the bait, this suckle helicopter down and oh, it gets smoked. 
So thank you for including that uh, in the old school fish world packaging. And there's old Tom Man right there. <laughs> nice. Oh, speaking of Tom Man, here's a bait that I actually have been kind of trying to score as of late, and I haven't found one for like a reasonable price. Everyone knows the man's one minus. Well, this is the minnow version of the bait. It is called, let's see here. Um, so I don't know what the name of this is. Uh, drop a comment if you know, but it's basically the minnow version of the one minus. What's so cool about this is sometimes with that one minus, maybe you want a little bit profile, but you want to keep something right in that, you know, 12 inches or less uh, depth zone. This sucker will do it. Uh, that looks like a little, what, three and a half inch bait. I just love the old school uh, fire tiger, I guess you could call that pattern of the old man's baits. Another Tom Man absolute jewel. Awesome. All right, two more baits in here. So what is this one? Uh, the Counter Attack Spinner Bait from Riverside Lures. I'm gonna have to read this thing and figure out exactly what we're looking at here. Counter the Enemy with the Counter Attack Spinner Bait. This new lure by Riverside features a pro-design head that easily glides over cover and limbs uh, for a virtually weedless retrieve. The .032 stainless steel light wire allows maximum vibration created uh, by the brass and nickel. And Excalibur counter-rotating blades, patent pending. I don't know if that patent ever got uh, finalized or not. Okay, for the off-balance action. So I think the way this thing is supposed to work, and I don't know even how they did this, but I guess for the most part, if you've got a dual-bladed spinnerbait, even if one is a Colorado, one is a Willow, those blades tend to move in the same fashion. For some reason, somehow, this bait, and it's probably just the angle of the blades themselves, they go in opposite directions, which I imagine totally, totally increases the vibration of this bait. Oh, man. Um, this one's probably going to be a collector, but, man, that's going to be really tempting because I would love to see how this thing feels at the end of my old uh, five-and-a-half-foot spinnerbait combo. Oof! And last but not least, we've got a pretty cool crankbait from Lindy, uh, Little Joe, which is now part of Pradco. And this is called the Tiny Shed, the Young Y. Around this time, I think this is a pretty unique era of crankbaits. I think Lindy had this one. Uh, Lazy Ike had their own version, I think called the Natural Ike. But basically, the crankbait companies were experimenting with some different materials. I think they got away from wood, a lot of them. They weren't using butyrate anymore. And while some companies were going to that just sort of standard hollow plastic, like the old uh, Bomber Model A's, others were sort of using this injection foam. And it really kind of didn't take off long term. I don't think we see a lot of injection foam baits anymore. But at the time, you saw more of these. Why do I think this one's injection foam? It has to do with the entry point of the bill itself. And what's interesting, is this thing actually came with two different bills. I don't know if they are different diving depths. Oh, okay, one's a round bill, one's a square bill. That's wild. But there is a little cavity here at the front of the bait, and you can actually remove the bill and replace it, which is cool. The only way to achieve that kind of cavity is to have a injection foam body of the bait. Oh, that is a good looking bait. Let's see what it says on the old instructions for this tiny shad. The Shad Lure gives you an unbeatable combination of lure durability, action, and quality. With its replaceable lip, uh, the Shad Lure will be out catching fish when other crankbaits are broken or useless. Uh, on the deeper tiny shad, the lips are interchangeable for deeper, shallow cranking on the same lure. Okay, that is pretty wild. Let's see how to replace the lip here. Replacing the lip is easy. Simply unscrew the front hook eyelet, grasp the lure firmly, and pull forward on the lip. Uh, push the new lip in and screw the eyelet back in. Oh man, so I guess that you have to unscrew a little screw there to replace the lip. Yeah, there is 0.0, .0 chance that my old man eyes would 
be able to do that on the water without like losing the screw and rendering the bait totally useless. So <laughs> it's a good thing I'm keeping this thing in the package. So Eric, thank you for an epic mail call. I am totally looking forward to that live stream. And Bass and Buds, I will let you guys know when we hook that up, most likely on the old Instagram page. If you want to check out Epic Eric's Bass Lab, I will link all the information for both his Instagram page and his website below in the video description. I'll see you all next Saturday. But until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.